Three minutes ago, OpenAI released two brand new open source models, and we'll be comparing against the Chinese models that took the limelight in the past few weeks, Quen Free Coder and also Kimi K2 when it comes to coding tasks on real world benchmarks. And basically, it seems they released a 120 billion parameter model, which can be run on data centers and high end desktops and laptops, and a 20 billion parameter model, which can be run on most desktops and laptops. Um, they seem to be designed for agentic tasks, which can be good for like agentic coding, I guess. And they have a full chain of thoughts that you can be reading too. Uh, there are a few benchmarks over here, which I won't be going into. And there's a research paper attached and you can download them on Hogging Face. But basically we'll be using them. They're already deployed on Open Router. So if you go to Open Router and search OpenAI, you can see the two models are deployed here. We'll use a bigger model, the 120 billion parameter model. And it seems the pricing that many of these providers which are hosting the model right now are charging are about 15 cents per input million input tokens and 60 cents per million output tokens. And I'll probably make a separate video about the 20 billion parameter model versus the 120 billion parameter model because many people would be interested in how much performance they can get locally on their computer if they don't have a high-end computer. Um, but for now, we'll just be using their data center version over here because it's already set up for us. I'll be testing this model against Quen Free Coder and Kimi K2 by making changes to AI application that I made called Tenza AI, and it basically helps to stay up to date with the latest AI news. Currently, the open source announcement is not on here because it only happens like every hour, uh, the checks for any new announcements, and this happened like one minute past the hour. Um, but yeah, basically, if you want to learn how to make applications just like that and monetize them and distribute them, then I teach everything to do with that in my AI startup school, and you can join that using the link in the description. And I take you through a program that helps you build applications, distribute them, and also come up with AI ideas for your applications too. There's a link in the description down below to join it. But anyways, we'll be getting an OpenAI or AI key from OpenRouter over here. So I'm going to call this like uh, YouTube uh, 6 August because it's the 6th of August for me right now and then just copy this key over here. And I'm gonna be using Klein in all three cases. I think it's good, a uh, good idea to use the same like environment, whether you're using like a Gemini CLI, uh, Cloud Code, like routing it, the request to a different place. Uh, Klein is a pretty popular choice. So I'll be using that in all cases. Uh, you want to install it, go to the settings over here, choose open router, and then paste your key over here. Press done. And then finally you can select the model from here. So the model should be available if I start typing OpenAI. Um, and it should be OpenAI slash GPT slash OSS. So I can just start off by saying, hello, who are you? And make sure that it is a OpenAI model and the requests are being routed properly. And you can see it says, I'm client, blah, blah, blah. And that's because it's in the system prompt. But if we go back to Open Router over here and then we go to activity, then we can see that this request was routed via Open Router to one of these model providers it seems it reached about 300 tokens per second, which seems pretty fast. And and then we can see more information about which provider it was routed via and so forth. But anyways, we'll be giving it some tasks. So I have a list of tasks over here, which have been recommended by users using the application. And one of them is allowing users to adjust the time they receive notifications. So on the application, if you go to it and you go to settings over here and go to manage notifications, you can get a daily digest of any like AI news that has happened. And there should be a setting which allows them to adjust it to like 8 a.m., 9 a.m., uh, like 10 p.m., whatever time they feel like suits them. And this requires a few things. It requires a database migration. It requires some editing on the API like ingest endpoint. And it also requires a like UI update. So we'll be giving this test to all three models. Let's start out by giving it to the open source model by OpenAI. We can make a new chat over here and I'll be using a super whisper. So I'll just quickly say to Super Whisper, hey, I basically want you to add the ability for the user to decide which time they receive the daily digest notification. You should update the front end with some UI like on the mobile expert application, update the manage notifications page, and then also update the ingest endpoint, which like decides which times they should be receiving the um, like daily digest. And then also add a new database migration for this and update the database schema for this. So all three things required updating and uh, yeah, go for it. So this is a prompt over here. I gave it some guidance on what it should be updating. So we can just press enter and then see what happens. And now let's do the same with Quen over here. So if you open up Klein again. Okay, so for some reason, Klein just kept bugging out and it kept like asking me to sign in over and over again because it didn't like me having different models running in parallel on different versions of it. Uh, so we'll be using uh, this model or this application instead, which is Recode. And Recode is like the number one application right now um, on OpenRouter over here. 
So we can just select a model from this list and go to API configuration, select, make sure that open route is selected over here. Uh, for the model, we can choose GPT slash G, OpenAI slash GPT slash OSS, 120 billion parameter. And then we can paste in the same prompt that we had in earlier. So I'll press enter over here. And now let's just quickly double check that this is actually going via the new model. So if we go back to activity, uh, we can see that is now going via recode. So recode to GPT OSS. Uh, so we will have this run basically and then see how this model performs. And then we'll have it running via Kimi K2 on recode as well. And then we'll have it running via Quen Free Coder on recode as well after this is done. All right, so it seems that OpenAI model completed the task on recode and it took 47 cents in total, which is pretty interesting. It did like take quite a while because um, I guess OpenRouter is pretty under load for this model. A lot of people are trying to use it right now. We will compare this against Kimi K2 and also Quen Free Coder by opening a new session, opening up Kimi, and then having the model run via Kimi now. So I'm gonna switch the model over to Kimi K2, then press done, and then run it in the Kimi folder over here. So what I'll actually do to make sure it's fair, I'll start off in architecture mode over here, or architect mode, and then give it the exact same prompt. Um, because the uh, OpenAI model also started off in architect mode. So I actually think whilst this is running, maybe I can spin up another session of root code. I haven't tried this before. And then give it the prompt for, or give it Quen Free instead. And I think that should be fine because it should like isolate it per session. So if I go back and then do Quen Free, Quen Free Coder, so paste the prompt over here and then choose architecture mode again to be fair and then press enter and we'll see how Quen Free Coder performs too. All right, so it seems like Quen Free Coder is also done and it seems that uh, also Kimi K2 is done. So when I quickly check the prices against these, uh, it seems that GPT's model, at least when running an open router, came out to be the cheapest at 47 cents, whereas Quen Free Coder came out to be $2.15 and then uh, Kimi K2 is 83 cents. Uh, so we'll check the solution against all of them. So basically for OpenAI solution over here, I'm just going to quickly read for it um, because this will be a very long video if I run all of them. So OpenAI's model seems to have added the migration properly and also the uh, thing to the database and the roundup generation. But it seems to have failed to actually make a update to UI. So it added the state, but it didn't make a UI update, unfortunately. Whereas Kimi K2 over here, if we check through what it did, it made a migration as well. It didn't make an update to schema table, unfortunately. Um, it just deleted the database types for whatever reason. Um, it did make an update to rand roundups as well. And looking through the code, this seems to be correct. It also added a nice time picker component as well. And it made many more updates to the settings page over here. So it actually updated the, uh, like it added a state and then it did all the relevant fetching as well on the notifications page. So I think Kimi K2 actually beats the OpenAI model in this case. If I check it against Tenza or like the Quen Free and Quen Free, like the thing is it made a bunch of like MD files that it didn't delete for planning. It also made a migration. It didn't update the schemas. It also deleted all the database types for whatever reason. Um, but hey, it happens. We can regenerate them later automatically. And it actually added a component to the notifications page, uh, which you can see over here. And this looks pretty good. It seems to follow the same design that we have used so far in the application and it handles uh, like changing it properly too. But of course, Quen Free Coder was much more expensive than Kimi K2. So I think Kimi K2 comes out on top here. I know like I can just tell OpenAI's model, hey, uh, can you add the component to on the notifications page? And then it will add the component. But yeah, I don't think I'd be using Quen Free Coder because it just ends up being much more expensive. Kimi K2 seems to do pretty well over here. And the only downside is it deleted my entire database types, which the OpenAI model did not do. So because this video is already getting pretty long and I'm tired because it's 4 a.m. over here, I'll do other tests in another video. So do subscribe if you want to see me try the OpenAI model against other models in much harder exams or much harder tests. But it seems it finished adding a component as well. So it made a new component over here. 
and it didn't actually integrate the component into the wider like into the screen that it was meant to as well. I thought that was like pretty obvious that I should do. So I think the model does require more guidance on the surface and Kimi K2 does. I feel like Kimi K2 just does a better job of like doing it on its own. With the extra guidance, it would probably end up costing the same amount maybe, but we'll see over the coming days as I do more tests. I will be making an update video in a few days when I have done more testing of the model, so do subscribe for that.